Hello everybody and welcome. This is a video about how you can use your Tesla on a ranch. Yeah, I've used it in just about all situations. While it's an awesome streetcar, it's an awesome ranch vehicle. The next good sized town close to Saratoga is Rollins. It's 45 miles away. We're navigating to the supercharger. It's located there. Got to do some shopping and got a meeting and a bunch of other stuff. So the Model X gets us here, there, and everywhere, plus everywhere on the ranch. We're on the way back from Rollins. Uh, we did a, a shopping trip, a meeting, and a little dinner. And it was good. Had a little Thai food there. It's a nice place. And we're heading home. We got about 12 miles to Saratoga here. Driving kind of slow, uh, you never know what kind of animals you'll find out here from an elk through an antelope, you just never know. Oh, see that's what I was telling you. <laughs> yeah, put it behind the thing. Oh, there you go, you should be good. I don't know where the hospital is around here. <laughs> I don't want to find out. No. Rocks. What do you think? Oh, yeah, I wonder. You never find a rock around here. So this is uh, what's called field engineering. We had uh, three holes that I guesstimated, but because the way these uh, conduits come up, just too close uh, in the routing uh, for the 160 here would have to be a uh, big old hole so uh, the guys uh, came up with this idea and it's a really good one so we're making just another hole you like that sagebrush <laughs> it's hard work at 7,000 feet ah oh, come on oh. Matt's a whopping 40. How old are you? 42. 42, you're an old man. Yeah, he's still hard work. Almost retirement age. Oh, man. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah, who needs a pickup truck when you have a Model X? We'll pull up the rest next year. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Brown will have his tractor out here. I'll see if I can get him to drag the bucket this way. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Greg. This uh, switch location is done. We've uh, covered it up a little bit. Matt did most of the work. And uh, we just helped watching. <laughs> All right. What do you say we get something to eat? Here we are out in the field working on antennas. Yes, I'm an amateur radio operator. And I don't have a truck, but I have a Model X. So if you tell me that I can't use my Model X, just like a pickup truck, you're crazy. It's got uh, some nine inches of ground clearance if I want. I think it's right now in the high position, a little over eight. I can drive over most of these rocks and junk here in the ground holes just like my pickup truck and I've got a Ford F-250 so it's the only vehicle I have out here and uh, we've been driving it all over the place it's uh, all-wheel drive it's a Tesla Model X it's all electric and I charge it at home all of the control is now hooked up down here we take the stepper uh, from the antenna over there and uh, we cross connect it to uh, cable number two. Then uh, another eight conductor cable called control one is up here. And uh, we take the five connections that go to the beverage box uh, here, start at uh, number eight and work our way down. And then uh, the control, this red wire here that controls the antenna switch 
uh, that will be on black or number one. That leaves us two spares in this cable. We may have to pull some more, but I don't think so. Okay, now comes uh, hooking up the coax. Uh, let's get that done. It's hard to see here a little bit, but uh, the feed line to the shack is now connected to the uh, input here on the switch, uh, switch one, which I'm going to end up changing to uh, number two because I don't want to leave it hooked up all the time, goes to a polyphaser on this ground bar here and then down and uh, to the vertical uh, located over where Greg is working. And um, that's done and the only thing I haven't connected is uh, the RG6. And I forgot to bring the tool out, so uh, I'll do that later. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, the box is done. I've got to uh, detail my uh, drawing here. I have a drawing that shows exactly what connects to what. And uh, we're good. Then I've got a RTV around these holes, keep the insects from making a home here. Other than that, I think uh, we're done with this box. Let's uh, go do some beverage work. Hello everybody and welcome. We are on a shopping trip today. We're north of Saratoga now and uh, we've got, according to the NAV, 31 miles to go. We're navigating to the Rollins Supercharger. That's in Rollins, Wyoming. We've got some shopping to do, uh, both hardware and some of the uh, shopping for um, food and stuff for the house. So all three of us are going, Sue, Greg, and I, and uh, we're heading that way. Let's have a look around. Some of you are curious about whether our fixed flat is still there. Yep, front right, same as the front left. We're up here on Interstate 80, about six miles from our exit in Rollins. We're right abreast of the Sinclair Oil Refinery. We just completed our shopping trip here at RP Lumber. Got some paint and some other necessary stuff here. I think we're heading over to uh, Supercharge. It's 21% on the battery. And uh, we're gonna charge until my wife's ready and we'll go pick her up. I think we'll go by the uh, new Electrify America four stall here in Rollins. I checked on it a couple weeks ago and uh, it was all ready to go except for the power company has not turned the juice on apparently. So we're just going to run by and uh, just see if anything has changed. You never can tell around here. No, they have not activated the Electrify America site here. Uh, start charge handles are still wrapped in the original plastic. Oh well, let's head over to the supercharger and uh, get some juice here. Here is the supercharger here in Rollins. It's a eight stall, 150 kilowatt. It's in the parking lot of this uh, Fairfield Inn. And uh, we're gonna go counterclockwise uh, for you digital people. That would be to the left, around the building. Yeah, it looks like we have Model S here. Looks like he's... A couple of them. Model Y. How are these numbered? 2A, 2B. Okay, well that works out. I'm going to pop into uh, 2A. I shouldn't be uh, doubling up with anybody, which is just fine. 
Remember how to back up? You take those two little points right there and you put them exactly where you want, right in the middle. Of course, I parked crooked. I didn't pull far enough forward. So you just put those little things right in the middle of the spot, the whole way back, and that will get you lined up perfectly. All right, I think we're good. Let's get it hooked up. 134 kilowatts from charge stand 2B. Nobody's on 2A, so we're getting almost the entire amount of power, as much as the car wants to take here. We're done charging. I set it to 90%. We got 65 kilowatt hours of energy, and uh, the car is ready to go. We're gonna unplug and go wait for my wife. We're sitting here in Walmart waiting for my wife, Sue, to come out. She's shopping, we're done. All right, here we are. We are westbound now on Interstate 80. On autopilot as usual. We have another day out in the field with the Model X. Makes a really great car for driving around in the tundra out here. Just set the suspension high and you were good. Got to haul all our tools and goodies out to the field today. Got more antenna work. We're back out in the field. It's, uh, what, 32 degrees or 34 degrees this morning. Here's all our tools uh, we're working on. The antenna's still over there. We've got to uh, connect the radials. Uh, if you don't know what that is, look it up. But that's uh, all the wires laying on the ground here, which is half of a vertical antenna. All right, let's get to it. All the radials, all 61 of them, 65 feet long, are all connected. They all come back to what's called the radial plate. Radial plate's located right below the antenna itself. And as you can see, I made a two inch copper strap from the radial plate to the coil, which makes the uh, low impedance connection to the radials. And I'm going to dress up the feed line, and uh, I think we're good. Here is the radial plate. This is a uh, ground. It's connected to a big lug right here to the radial plate. Radial plate is uh, insulated from the post. This keeps it from arcing inside of the stepper housing per the instructions. I uh, added a gigantic uh, two inch strap there to bring the ground from the coil down to the radial, so it's very low impedance. All right, other than uh, maybe filling this in with some pea gravel, the radial system is in. Uh, the box, everything is dressed up, uh, waterproofed. I think we're good to go here. Good morning. It is another day here on the ranch. 
57% stated charge. We charged at the supercharger in Rollins yesterday. The battery, as you can see, is uh, chilly because it sits outside, 39 degrees this morning. It is 9.33. We've got um, snow, rain, and high winds on the way. Next two days will be uh, decent temperature here, but it'll be very windy, 20, 25, 30 mile an hour winds. We have a little bit more to do out in the field for our ham radio stuff trying to get that all done today. We're heading to the shop right now. We've got to get some hardware and stuff downtown Saratoga, so we'll be heading there. This is life on the ranch in a Model X. This seems to be our normal haunt here. We're always coming down and getting parts and pieces and stuff here at the hardware store. This Main Street, and uh, they're doing construction. Wish this was smell-o-vision. That diesel over there is uh, really going for it. Anyway, we're on the way to our next stop here, downtown Saratoga. Of course, living in a small town in the rural area, you have to rely on the local post office where your P.O. box is. So when we're in town, of course, uh, you have to stop here at the post office and uh, do your business. The Model X is pulling a trailer. We have uh, six 80 pound bags of uh, concrete on it. And our job today is to uh, bury three four by fours. And uh, we gotta hand dig it through uh, rock and that. Fill this up with water for our concrete. And we'll dig a hole, put the posts in, and then pour the concrete around it. Anyway, just another job for a Model X on the ranch. Well, here we are. That's what 24 inches looks like through all this rock. Just look at the junk I got out of the hole. Yeah, all those rocks. Using a crowbar and a four pound mallet. If it falls over here, the hell with it. Looky there. Greg just put the finishing touches on this thing some of the rocks we dug out back on the hole. Hopefully the gravity will help hold it in. All right, on to the next one. This is hole number two and uh, went down 27 inches with the post hole digger. One little rock. You win some, you lose some. Well, here we go. Number two went in like a dream. You never can tell. Hit some small rocks, no problem. We uh, got it in the ground 27 inches, so it should be fine. We're contemplating whether we're going to do another one. The sun is uh, on its way down. It's almost 4.30 here. So we're going to try it anyway. Go check it out and see if it's uh, worthy of trying today or tomorrow. Our weather window closes tomorrow afternoon with rain, snow, and very cold weather. We are done for the day. Oh man, that one hole took us forever. We're going to leave things connected, uh, leave it in the shop for the night, and then uh, do our last hole in the morning before the weather gets us.